Thank you very much, Gabriel, and welcome everybody. Hey, here again in another webinar. My name is Noé. I'm going to start sharing my screen to the beginning presentation. Yeah, the topic is uh, retail, actually. Quite interesting. We have been working with this uh, topic over more or less one month. So let's just go on and show the functionality for this webinar for a little bit. Okay. Let me start sharing. Today we're gonna be focusing on the what it is, what it is, right? From from scratch. In the ideally, this is something that uh, a, we would use with when we want a, 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 when we will implement stores, right? A point of sales and a other features that of course we have within the a LS central functionality. So this is it. A, let me show you. Well, for me. I have a supermarket, so this is a regular POS. I can, uh, well, um, actually open through a browser, right? A business central is connected to my POS directly through this actual a, a, a PO, a business central with the POS, and we connect everything with a, a, actually a browser, right? So you're going to be able to use all this functionality. So in a regular POS, for instance, I want to look for the categories in an item when somebody wants, in this case, a basketball, a division called non-food, right? So this is, well, how the POS actually sometimes works. It gives us different screens for me to look for items, to do a selection of, uh, of specifically what I would like to sell, in this case, a uh, uh, a specific item that is inside a category, basically. So without complications or or without having to go in, in, into a complicated uh, inventory management. One second. The LS Retail allows actually to, to work a, a perfectly for this type of operations to have a a, this this beautiful um, a picture. The item is basketball, but as well, I purchase this in boxes, right? So that's very important in the retail environments. And um, well, a, you can see as well my POS that actually selling this item, right? Have different functions. Let's check the price. Let's change it. Let's provide some discounts, right? Line discounts that I will be offering. And this is an info code. All right, so so I will provide them this information. Um, and we work with permissions, of course, within the application. Some of our actual a, a team of people actually are managers, some other cashiers. So um one second, please I have any issue. Okay, and well, uh, here the idea is that how how and uh, how do we actually manage all of this, right? Uh, it's just to show you what's behind the scene, right? I'm not going to focus everything on the pause a uh, design because actually uh, we are not. Uh, this is part of the actual functionality, but believe me, it has everything that you would need. Let me just pay, for instance, for a POS where I would, uh, uh, let's say, pay in cash as an example, right? So this is a regular POS with actual, a, a, well, general transactions, as you can see, in order to sell, and then, of course, receive a type of payment, which could be, well, cash, could be on account, customer account for a year purposes, promotions, and other, other interesting uh, ways of paying and tender types that we have, of course. And we can integrate with your actual a, a, a pin pad, right? So in order to receive payments with actual a credit debit cards. But it doesn't only has this actual POS to start selling. Actually, we have in English retail another channel to be able to sell, which is the actual e-commerce. 
In here, it's more or less the same idea, right? I'm not talking about, remember, I'm not going to show, oh, this is my beautiful website where I you know, have different colors or whatever, right? Look at this. Here are different menus that, well, open the specific design that you would like to have, but this is really cool. Actually, from here, I could uh, create menus. Uh, I could show uh, immediately the products that I, I would like to sell. And this would be connecting immediately all my information. Let's add to our card issues, right? Uh, I can prepare a purchase as well as I might doing it and connect it right to my to my demo environment in this case but this will be for the company and then the idea is that uh, i will be then connecting this uh, website which we call magento right for you to know uh, with my actual business central warehouses so i'm going to be then having different channels different physical stores and different websites from where I actually sell all of them functional the idea is to give you then the overview of the functionality because it's so huge right but you then understand what you could do and any website like in our POS has categories this is these are coming from our own product design right I'm going to go in a moment within the products and let's say that well I have well, uh, different uh, articles within a group, which all public, uh, published in my website. But the interesting part here is that, well, we have this group of, of uh, items that came from our design for clothing, for women, from where I can have, well, from different vendors, I can actually look for uh, different types of um, uh, uh, features, right? Which size? Do, do you, this is washing, what repellent, and all of these once again interestingly came from our well from the capability. So you can actually add them to the product. Plus, of course, the price, the unit of measure, and so forth. Right here, the idea is that as well we have these other type of processes either in our website or POS the color. Okay, this is the same product. Okay, this is the jeans shirt Linda Lane. Very good. So why not just to select one specific color, look how even the picture changes, right? And of course, the size. Well, it depends. You are going to be able to select a, and create products with these advanced type of features, right? Well, I'm just selecting my size that I want to purchase, right? And then as well, why not to leave well some comments or just simply purchase adding to cart, well, and then this type of sales, if I open my shopping cart, more similarly to my POS, both are two channels actually to be able to sell from actual LS Central, okay? And well, a, this would be then once it is, this is counted, will be transferred to be then shipped, right? A, so, well, once I have just selected a, a product, well, I can go and a, check out the sales operation, right? So this is the idea a, of uh, the, the two main a, ways of approaching the LS retail functionality. Okay, let's start from the top, which is, okay, the sales channel. What is lying behind these two type of, of a, a sales channels that I'm, I'm showing, okay, is the full is the full a uh, business central ERP that you already know? If not, well, if this is your first time, well, we connect all these different channels, okay? The way I have explained that we are going to be able to sell on our website, in a brick and mortar store, right? And behind that, we have an ERP because those are only, so to speak, clients to sell. But be below, I have an LS central where I can design my bono sale. I have, uh, I can create then a white for the, for the clothing. Look at this, a fashion, fashion, a functionality for the sizes, the styles, the whatever. And this applies to all of your items, right? As well, we have the LS replenishment, all right? In order to actually deploy and purchase and replenish all our stores from a main warehouse, let's say. Okay, that's part of the most advanced features, the LS replenishment is super good, right? And then a, the traditional, okay, finance, purchase, inventory, warehouse, and etc. So all of that, all of this is for me, 
a single solution is not separated. So whatever I sell, I actually can transfer those items that I have sold with the specific price and payment methods. They are received in Business Central and then posted them to the finance. A module, so to speak, so you can see how, what is the idea, right? It's completely and fully integrated without any, any problem. So that would be the, the, the idea here with the, the these two main components, right? What is a, a, a the, the, the technology that we have behind the scene? So you can see it working actually in real time as I'm selling, right? Uh, okay, so this is the process. Uh, from from here, I will be now. Um, I, I will be showing the head office, right? Because uh, as I was mentioning, as I show you, we have an online store, but uh, we can have uh, actually even not only two channels, but more stores. Okay, so I have yes, all of these are different store. I have a supermarket. I have a store for fashion, right? As well, I have, a, well, my own website, right? All of these are different stores from what I sell and that are physically located in different places, of course, right? The idea here is that then, well, all this information flowing, right? From one place to another, um, from different models. I'm talking about, for instance, when I sell something in my stores, well, I need to update that inventory in my warehouse. And once I sell, I need to update my income and my payment methods, okay? So that's the, the basis of, of all of this, but this wouldn't be just a regular POS. This, we have an ERP that actually is going to help us to understand, let me show you my presentation with more, detail, I can show you actually how the, the, the technology really works. Let me just go here. In the head office, we are going to be designing the items, the prices of the offers, you understand that part. And then, uh, well, we have other features like the replenishing, staff, staff commission, a click and collect or customer order. So your members, now that you have seen that I have the two stores online and physical open. Well, the idea is that from now on within this company, I could sell online, but pick my items later in any given store if I don't want them to be shipped. Sometimes it happens. So the head office works for me. I set the communication central part to receive information and then share it to the other stores. That's basically the idea of the head office. The same happened, let's say, with the items that you saw. I designed them first in my head office, and then I share that information and send it and push it to the stores online or a, a brick and mortar. Okay. This is then the back office. The back office is a module that is just for the store. So you are going to, let's say, uh, have a module for the store management because you need to close at, uh, at some specific times, right? You need to open, you need to control your the people that work, the cashiers that work for you, that's the store management. Then we have the cash management, which is the second part that allows us to count the money. For instance, when you want to then take the money out of the cash register and put it into safe, but then later you need to send it to the bank. And from the bank, well, yeah, the finance a, a controller we do other stuff but i want to control how many bags i put in if i i want um in the in the in the safe right or if i take it to the bank well which transfer or how i actually transport the money pos management and inventory management as well are super important pos as you already saw it uh, we design a POS, right, for every given store and even uh, on an employee level, we can have different menus. And inventory management. Uh, inventory is super important because in the store, we manage labels, right? We manage, and we need to print our labels and shelf labels. We need to physical count the items in the store. And then we are going to need, well, maybe a small handheld or a small device, right? So my people in the store can count. It's quite then different from the actual just regular warehouse, which is more related to um, big boxes uh, with pallets and so on, right? Another type of, of ideas that we have. There. Then uh, we have in the front office, 
You already saw that I have a M central POS, okay? And a good to tell you, a, it, as well, we have a mobile device, so Android, the one that you saw, we can install it in your Android mobile, right? Mobile inventory, we have an app, as I was telling to you, to control our inventory management, but the handheld or the device that we're going to use is your actual, a, 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 even a, a tablet, we could use a computer, so you don't have to spend on these uh, advanced warehouse devices, right? Which are, uh, well, uh, are better built. Uh, if we drop them, uh, uh, it's, it's as well something that I would recommend to have and they scan super fast, okay? Otherwise, with a smartphone, which is a mobile inventory, it's an app actually that we can install. But in order to work with them, right, they are uh, a little bit uh, uh, slower, just, well, it, it helps us to receive in the store, but imagine that we install everything in your cell phone, right? So it's it's not exactly as a handheld, but it helps a lot. Okay, what else is behind this idea I'm trying to show you? Okay, the architecture. Uh, we will then work with a central server in the top in green. I, this, this icon, right, helps me to then uh, have well, uh, a place where I will be connecting, implementing, and where my ERP would reside, correct? But then later, how am, am I going to then offer connectivity with the stores? Well, through a POS. So in the left, uh, in this central screen, we can actually connect your POS completely online. Online POS is my first option. It only and only if your internet is actually a, a doesn't have issues, right? Uh, otherwise, you, we would be stop. stop uh, we would stop the sales basically. But then we have as well the most popular way of implementing the offline POS. It's just that well, business central is in the cloud, right? So we never actually expect to have in our main server an issue. We will then need go back to the POS where in the stores, majority of time, well, we have yes, internet disconnections, that's normal. Uh, we cannot guarantee that even if you pay for one or two modems, right? It depends, well, basically of the region. So and in, in any way, in any instance, we could go and work with an independent host with a local database with SQL. So in other words, uh, we would be working with a POS that we install in a machine, right? So whenever we get the connection again to internet, the POS, the machine, the computer where we install the POS, right? Actually uses the local machine to save information. And once we get internet back, we transfer that to the main server. Okay. And the last scenario for our architecture is still quite popular, but we use it more when we have, for instance, supermarkets with 10 lanes with uh, 10 POSs or even more sometimes, right? Where it's preferably, <coughs> preferably. <coughs> I would install even a local server, inter interim server in the actual store. So the multiple POSs, 10, 10, 15, 20 POSs, sometimes I have implemented 30 POSs in one store. Okay. So I prefer to have a local server, you actually to connect first by information, right? This could then as well be considered as a hybrid model. Okay, the store is completely independent from the actual server, or in the end, yes, we need communications at least once a day at the end of the day, at least, right? So this is a actually regular architecture that we normally use, right? And if you were thinking, okay, I want to understand LS Retail, but we understand that even before going to review any given solution, we need to understand if we can customize for our own purposes. And this is super beneficial. We need to understand that because we we, even though we train you to actually work with the standard functionality, well, a customizing is not well bad at all. So this is then free. Okay, so you can actually go with it. Even here in Optimus, we help you to customize your different processes according to your needs. Okay. So this is like a Lego methodology. I'm gonna go back to the system again because well, we have other other features 
that are not specifically related only to an ER, uh, RP, ERP, but the retail industry by itself, okay? So yes, we have, let's say, a loyalty program, of course. We have an e-commerce solution that you saw, okay? We have a checkout, so you can actually have your customers paying by themselves. We have a, a website, but we can advertise, okay? So we have these different tools to contact our people our customers, so they get, I don't know, our best offers. And the all of these tools that you see here, right, to start learning what LS7 Pro is, if you were thinking about, I want to implement stores, but as well, I need to have an email for specific a, a communications with my customers. I would like to have an advertising model and so forth. Okay, we have that as well, okay? So if I actually go into the, a idea of what LS Central is, this is a unified commerce, all right? We connect the websites, we connect the ERP, everything is connected as one single solution, right? So you are going to be managing centrally your actual a, a solution for you. And from the back office that I was mentioning, we can connect, uh, let's say that we create a product to be sold, okay? We can sell it, sell it from your a, a store, from your website, from a Android apps, right? And everything will be connecting directly to the LS Central environment, okay? So that's mainly in a nutshell what we do. Plus, of course, we understand that we have, your, well, you have promotions, offers, the retail industry is super, super advanced. Normally it is like that if you're in the stores, it's a combination within the McDonald's offers and the McMeal normally, okay? Uh, the, the, the fries with hamburger and the soda has one price if they are sold together, okay? Multiple triggers, okay? If you are part of my loyalty, if we have a relationship with a specific customer like you who are, well, uh, maybe, um, you are a wholesaler as well. Well, that would be super good for me. If I'm in the construction industry, well, maybe I contract a, a person that is works in, in the hardware right industry, understand that you have a lot of construction business, okay? Why not establish a relation and offer special discounts, okay? But in the end, uh, we are going to be mixing and matching all of them together, okay? Let me show you once again, just to give you the idea. The deal is like the McDonald's, okay? Discount offers direct discount. Multi-buy discount is the more you buy, well, the better the discount you can offer. Mix and match is quite advanced. It is actually about, well, how many you are going to combine to offer a discount. Sometimes two, two items of different groups, and you get a discount. Sometimes, no, they need to be two, uh, two, uh, two items and I'm going to give you away one item, okay? That's mix and match. Let's mix different items from different areas, from different groups. Uh, if you are in a supermarket, why not to offer a mix and match? Then to, if you purchase a, my a meat, right? But you as well take some spices and a beer, okay? And nobody knows it, but if you purchase all of that, well, you immediately, with the combination of all of this, you can then get a discount. Things like that, different type of ideas, okay? As well, the tender type of offers, right? Which allow us to then, if you pay me with foreign currency or with other, well, I'm going to give you discounts. And loyalty is super important. Loyalty, uh, which I'm going to show in a moment, all this part, well, so you can get the idea. Loyalty is basically, if you have seen the, um, if you have seen in different business, we offer points, right? We offer points that you are going to be able to then accumulate then and use them as a payment method later. But what do you need to then do to get those points, okay? That's where we get creative. And then, well, with this in mind, this is the basic, okay, the, 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 the basic functionality that you need to, to take from, from this part, okay? Uh, and then if I actually go, let's just begin with the discounts, but at the same time, try to review, well, more topics so you can get more information about this 
tool, so-called LS Central. I'm going to open now the items because I would like to first understand what is the item, the item configuration or the options or the possibilities that it gives me, and then review, well, what it has, a, let's just review the promotions at any given moment, right? So everything is well in the in the process of the design. Well, when I actually created, let's say uh, I was selling a basketball, I believe this item was. So I want to see the item card because in the retail, in the retail industry, let me see um, retail. Okay, in Business Central we have what we call the item, right? Uh, now that we work within this environment uh, uh, with the stores and uh, my websites and everything, okay, well, well, it opens. Let me close this. I'm sorry, it's working on this. Let me go back to my presentation. Meanwhile, um, so you can check this part. Okay, so uh, from, from here, uh, regarding still about inventory, we have a replenishing process automated, all right, from where you're going to be able to, in one single tool, actually be able to detect basically the trends of the products that are selling. I just would need six months of historical data. Normally, when we do after first implementations of the stores, then we wait normally six, six years, six months, sorry, to actually sell, continue selling items until we get sufficient information, right? And then what are the features when we understand this? Well, automatic replenishment and manual replenishment are still normal tools that we use, even though, well, the, the system, what it does. Okay, when we start, we work with manual replenishment. You purchase your items, just a few of them in each store. Okay, just a few of them. And then the system is going to start detecting if any of them, because maybe you might be introducing 100, 200 items a, a year, but only a few of them are going to be actually selling within the time, creating a trend within your customers, meaning that they like them. Okay, some of them and in the specific stores. So the system will tell you when to move from manual replenishment, when we detect the trends, to move to automatic replenishment. Good. That will be the overall idea. But behind, of course, we have other tools because actually, a, 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 I'm sorry, the main characteristic of that type of understanding for uh, a replenishing is that it's store-based store base, retail base, because in the retail world, we have seasons, we have different uh, scenarios, right, where we can actually do adjustments, okay, that's super typical in this environment for the historical data. What other tools Revolution has? The budgets, we can budget how much we want to spend and open to buy is a window for your purchasers to tell you from the budget, you can still spend this or that amount, okay, open to buy too. Assortment is because we need to understand which products will be sold in which store, okay? You don't sell the same products all the time in the same stores, you sell what is actually sold, okay? And you replenish what is sold. So yeah, with the time, the assortment will change. Life cycle management will be related to the take your items when they are actually when you start selling them well they will be then creating a trend not all the items but just the actually the items that are popular and that are, are actually selling so i want to detect when they a, a trend is actually a, a, a created within the sales okay for your customers then i want to detect that and the system then tell me what to purchase based on that trend and um, we need to move from manual to manual to automatic to then in the end come back to manual procedures only. Okay, and that's life cycle management. The month forecasting is just well, a, we can connect AI technology, all right, to review the historical data. Okay, proposal calculation, of course, to then tell me what to purchase and transfer order. Remember, as a proposal, so you can still do some tweaks here and there, and out of stock tracking just in case we understand that something is not actually um, a, in place, right? Out of stock, we need to review, yes, which items I don't have, but in comparison with the sales figures, I should have, okay? This is the tracking and more advanced tools for us. 
Coming back then, uh, once again to my screen, I want to just simply look at one of my items to start explaining the inventory process. The idea is that I have come back to the main head office. Remember that? The main head office is the actual area where I will be just actually designing, okay? And the best explanation for what to design is that, well, I basically design a POS, I basically design my products, I update my prices, I create my menus, right? Actually, we in the central head office, okay? Well, it is opening because I believe, uh, well, the server is a little bit slow, right? To show you the, the, the items. Let me just show you something additional about the illustrator process. Let me just go back here. Mobile inventory, okay? Related to inventory process. Okay, we can install an app so you can actually work with receptions and worksheet to count in items to, to do everything on the on the smartphone, basically. Okay, that's the, the, the idea. Then uh, we have different sales tools as well. For instance, we have this um, a POS that we can install as well in your devices, tablets or smartphones. I was mentioning this type of a POS is that actually work within this and you can actually connect a terminal. Uh, and if you have a special tablet for sales operation, we can actually use the actual a slider to actually slide our, our terminal, our a, a credit debit cards, okay? So then, let me see what I do with that. It's a little slow, sorry. Okay. So another interesting information, uh, just for us to start reviewing, we can install these new POSs that are uh, quite new, quite new, okay? Where we just basically install a hardware device so for self ordering, check out. So the actual people can actually come to the screen. We have the terminal there. They actually gonna pay with their own card while they, well, they just can select the products by themselves, okay? Normally and most widely we have actually this in restaurants, right? It has been just more or less like that. They, they loved it, but as well in a few supermarkets, we have been as well seeing this trend, okay? A, to install this type of devices that actually work within Business Central, okay? Um, let me try to open this again. Let's see. Okay. Then a other type of features that we have is, is, is we, we can actually install a third-party self-checkout integration, right? All of these are different features that you could use. I'm not saying that you are going to implement all of this, but just to show you what is then available. If you want an LS e-commerce, like I did with my Magento website, because I want to sell and send all the items to be replenished to my main warehouses, okay? This is the actual best option. LS Retail has different out-of-the-box integration with Magento, which is, well, the, the, the website that I show you, Appensia and Dynamics Web, okay? So these are global providers for web, a, a, a web, web websites, actually, and they actually help me to then deliver a unified experience for the business, okay? So once again, to even when it's needed, even a purchase in one store or sale or, or online store, and then actually pick the item in other in, 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 in other store, basically, right? So uh, this is regarding the e-commerce, how it works. Uh, then LS Insight, uh, if you need a specific built-in a block report a, a package, okay? That actually uh, uh, works for your stores, which, which is called LS Insight. We have already done it. We have all the reports that you're gonna need: sales, discounts, basket, KAA, average basket, right? A uh, uh, how many every third, how much uh, the, uh, every store has sold, etc. All the KPIs and devices that in the industry are super popular, right? And then 
other type of different reports that all of them are just called LS inside, okay? So as you can see, there is a lot of different tools, okay, that I could then definitely would use. Staff management, they are actually for a, a creating and reviewing the actual personal that I have um, in my store, whether they are cashiers, salespeople, managers. The workforce management allow me then to verify, maximize, ma maximize my productivity by creating the roosters, okay? The rooster planning, let's say for the following month, right? Who's going to be included? Who's going to work on weekends? At what time I'm going to be opening this or that day the store? How many people will I need on a daily basis? Maybe from Monday to Friday, I'm going to need a team of two or three people, but, but then on specific days, I need to change all of that, right? That's the roster planning that I allows me to then create this roster plan well in business central in business central and then that can be shared to the stores and the POSs will assure that the people that should arrive well it's actually registered all right register the hours that they need to work the POS is going to give me communications and they can see how many hours are working basically on the entrance on a daily basis to the store Okay, so staff management is a super useful tool when you need to verify the times, the clock, so to speak, right, of your people, but this is connected to a POS. If you have another tool that do more or less the same, well, we should then integrate those clocks, those uh, features to maybe extract data and import it in Business Central to the tech. And this as well is gonna help us with the time that we can get, we have an accurate uh, hours report, an accurate salary report, and statistics and better analysis, like, well, time off, the breaks, the holidays, and so forth. Okay, closing a little bit the staff management. I was trying to explain here the item card. This is going to be the, uh, the regular basketball, a super easy item to actually just review. Then, a uh, for me, I would like to then consider how to categorize, okay? Remember that we have this idea that we need categories, okay? Do I have no food? This is a basketball or, or a sport item and well, other type of division, item category and retail product group. They help me, yes, to find items. Sometimes I just need to find in a POS or in an EP, a sales report, give me the basketball information and voila, all of the items that are in this actual product group will be shown. Here, the regular unit price, this is a unit of measure. So this is basically a, a business central, okay? These basic fields. Now, when I talk about retail, what else is behind this, right? Well, let's go and check them. Imagine that you are going to create a product for the first time, right? This is the basic data you're going to need. Like, yeah, I need the description, the groups. This is an inventory item. Let me just show you a little bit. We could use services or non-inventory, okay? Which would be services like me, okay? I'm providing a consulting service in a general way. So, well, my, I would uh, create my item, right? For consulting fee. And I would say, I would like to have a base of a unit of measure hours. Good, easy. And this will, of course, do the accounting procedures behind, which is not specifically inventory type of item. They are different, right? Even accounting ones. And non-inventory, well, they are just basically like uh, pencils, papers that you purchase, and even for the stores, right? Now, what, what am I doing here now that I'm designing a, 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 an item that will be more or less within this new world of websites, POSs, Android apps, everything just applicable to sell? Well, from the actual item design, the idea is that you are going to be selecting to which stores this item will be then a, a sent or pushed to be sold. So I have for all the stores, for in my case, restaurants, or even, well, this uh, could be uh, fashion stores, okay? I want to sell only this item to the fashion stores. So you select them, we group your stores with time and look at this. The actual 
definition is actually to then not only send the item, this will be then sent by, a, we have technical procedures to, as long as you tell us where you sell any given item, immediately we help you actually to do that. And we train you to transfer information from the central to your stores, okay? But this is basically the most important feature that we are going to, in order to understand retail, is connected everywhere, even in the item card. And here I can establish a price for one type of stores, but why not to say, okay, but um, if you sell specifically this item in the fashion, okay, in my fashion stores, I'm gonna give you, I don't know, a better price even, okay? This will be then the idea, plus taxes for that region. And actually the prices, if you have actually different type of taxes procedures for item and regarding the different location of your store, the system is going to actually do that automatically. And the unit of measure, do you are, are you gonna sell the bag of uh, six basketball, uh, basketballs or only the pieces? What do you wanna sell in these fashion stores? Okay, only the pieces. I don't want to sell bags. Here you can see your markups, your profit. So with this simple example, you get the actual idea of what we do. Okay, this, then this, uh, we have a, other important information regarding the items that are just, is just secondary. And now that I'm here, I can show you. But the main idea is that centrally, I'm going to be designing my items and then they will be transferred to the actual stores. Then, you know, generally speaking about some item features, of course, we have the barcodes because, well, the barcodes are super important for me to detect if a barcode is a piece or if a barcode is a bag to identify the different need to measure, you get me here. So then uh, with this, I, um, I can tell you, this is why and uh, how we can actually use handheld devices, which we use in our stores in LS Central. That's why we update the barcode always, okay? According to what you scan, we are going to provide you scanners all over the store or uh, in the back office to receive as well the items when the vendor arrives, right? Or in the main warehouse where you have all the actual stock, okay? With the barcode definition, then we actually are going to be working. All this master data, let me show you other ideas. As well, I have variants. What are variants, just in case? Let's say that my Wilson NBA basketball item is a dedicated and has special a logo for the Bulls, okay? This is a variant. Other for the Lakers, which is another a Los Angeles basketball a team or whatever, right? A, the, the, the New York Knicks and things like that, okay? So the idea is that this item has different colors, has different teams, has different whatever, okay? And we are going to be combining, well, with this simple idea, well, if they have a, a different size, if they have a... A, a different styles or in this case teams all right and then for that to happen to combine different characteristics for the items we offer the variant framework okay the variant frameworks then are actually based for me to actually combine whatever i need for any given item this is how we work within ls central interesting to see it for the first time. I have decided that I will be having different colors. If for ice cream, I have decided that I will need to pick different flavors, of course, right? For clothing, I need the size, okay? Once you define each of the different variables that you may be thinking for your items, now we are gonna need just the values. For instance, now that I'm clicking on the size, Right, I'm going to get the different values, size 1, 10, size 11, 12, 13, 14, and so forth. If I review, because in my supermarket, I will sell soda, well, I have cola, cola diet, lemonade, and the others, right? But interesting to actually review it because for an item, you are going to be able to combine. I want the size, let's talk about this, uh, uh, clothing that I was talking about. I want the size and I want the color, okay? So with these two, 
okay, we are going to be able to combine all the different colors with all the different sizes, okay? It's up to you because later for any given item, we can say, but I only have these colors and I only have these sizes for this specific item. And that's it. This is the idea of the variant framework. We are talking about actually the same item, but with different variants, okay? And this is super traditional, for way of working for us here in, in, in LS Central. So you can then design everything in this actual main screen. And that will be helping us then to transfer to the store so you can sell the item or even in the online website according to your actual needs. There are other configurations. Yes, we have, a, well, just to mention for, for your then different merchandising purposes, a attributes that you want to manage and warehousing processes, okay? More advanced features, but everything just to mention to give you the actual idea, you control your items centrally like I'm doing, and then we replicate that information to your stores, correct? That would be the basic concept of this process. Let me just show you now a purchase, and then I can even show you a little bit about replenishing, right? Super important. Um, let me just, for instance, open a purchase order so you can see it for the first time. The purchase order, when we actually do it, uh, this is our general document that we have in the supply chain. We as well have sales orders, right? Of course, uh, we do not only sell through POSs. Uh, sometimes you uh, in the retail industry need to sell to wholesalers sometimes, and we have the tool as well to do this, okay? We call then the supply chain that part. but. The supply chain actually begins with a regular provisioning of items, okay? Here's my purchase order. So all the, our documents have a number. And look at this. What this number means for me is that I'm going to create a purchase order from my head office, okay? Because there could be instances where you purchase from your store. So we identify the purchase order from the initial a location where you are purchasing. In this case, my head office and a consecutive number, okay? Get the idea. If I purchase in the store number one, this could be SO1, store one, and a consecutive number. Then the actual purchase order has the option, then we get all your vendors in the head office, right? And well, he did, this is my actual list of vendors. So I just need to select one of them and immediately all the vendor information will be recalled and recorded here in this purchase order, right? That's the idea of the document. And then below, in the second segment, the idea is to include the items that you want to purchase. Here is once again my Wilson Authentic Series. But important to mention, okay, in every retail industry, I have different locations where I'm going to be able to purchase. In my case, I do it centrally, okay? I have different warehouses. My main one, most important warehouse or the largest one is the warehouse number one south, okay? But then let's take a look. In the end, for us, the stores and your stores, even the online store is an actual warehouse, okay? Look at this. I have a web store for Kronos. Why? Well, it happens that for my sales in the website, I actually have a specific area or even an actual warehouse, right? That I need to create as location. So your stores and your main warehouses will be in this list. So we can actually dedicate all our transaction like this purchase order to actually then be able to use those warehouses to then stock items, okay? We just need to indicate which warehouse. Like in this purchase, I want to receive these 20 basketball items pieces in this warehouse number one, good? But remember that with this in mind, we can purchase in any store and receive in the store. So good, this is a purchase uh, that I will send to a vendor. This is the total uh, with taxes, all the calculations, plus you are going to be able to connect it and send it to through Outlook, okay? So we have integrated solution. So basically, if you want, I can print it if I have the vendor in front of me or why not 
just to immediately send it through an email, okay? Uh, or, or a different format. I would like to have a PDF, right, in combination with this. Uh, so have an attachment of this actual purchase order. Let me just give a preview about this information, right? So this is a purchase. It, what, the important idea here is that this could be related to your store or to the warehouse. So you can get the idea, okay? We link now the purchase order with the store information, okay? So this is a purchase order that could be sent through an email immediately and with all the characteristics, okay? So you can see that we can do purchase order, but I don't want to dedicate too much time and do manual transactions, okay? So this is a ship to address. Let's take a look at all the purchasing information in a general way. So we are uh, continue to learn well the idea. And purchasing this item, this is uh, the taxes, and everything is just here. Okay, but this is not what I really wanted to show you because if you are interested in just managing a, a, a store chain or in the future you want to expand or if it's already complicated the store management within your company, we understand that it's so, so dynamic. Now, in, in order to help you with that, we do not only work with purchase order, every system does that, okay? I want to show you the replenishing part, okay? The replenishing part, it begins with a life cycle, okay? This is what then the system will be doing, helping um, with your process. Here I have my life cycle curves. Okay, I have created for some of the items I want to start replenishing, okay? Of course, I can do a manual purchase order like I did, and I will be having my Excel behind the scene and, I, you know, so I can replenish the, at least what I know it's being sold by reviewing the data. That's minimal what you should be doing when we talk about replenishment. Review what you've been selling and then recreate, I don't know, every two weeks, uh, a new a new replenish exercise. So here uh, is my life cycle curve for electro items in my supermarkets, which are computer, a, a USBs, and so forth. Imagine the this type of product. The thing is that within this time, actually, I have verified that we have a life cycle, a business central hand review for this type of item. Remember that we have categories, right? For my items, this is the first and most important definition for your items. Then the system, you can tell them for any category of items, right? What I'm going to do actually with that. So let's say that I will review a Business Central has this calculating a, a, a feature to review the sales operation, in this case, for the men clothing, okay? Let's review just the actual definition for the summer, just as an instance, right? And we can dedicate how many periods the system want uh, to review in the past to tell me what to do. This actually told me that whenever I started with the, the, the clothing analysis, hey, we, we detected a trend. So from the very first week, I'm going to do a replenishing process, okay? Which is the average number one. This is a definition, okay? Oh, this is telling me, hey, Noe, we have seen that for some items, you need to apply a replenishing process now. And as well, after the 12 weeks for the summer, the business central recommend me to actually go with stock, stock levels, okay? So these are, the, this is my lecture. I, we train you to actually review this. And for these items, in the end, leave the simple stock level, okay? Which is basically the minimum or maximum inventory that more or less manual, okay? Or with your, your experience, Okay, I can tell you that we sell this item on the summers. This is what the, the idea of these items. Let's start with the actual trend. So I'm just going to then tell you that you need to replenish what you have sold automatically. But then in the end, if you want to continue selling the items, it, this will be with your just inventory levels, not so automatic. It's automatic still, but it's not, the LS Central is not reviewing the trend anymore. There is no trend. There is no trend. Sometimes you sell, sometimes you don't, but well, at least you still have some stock there. Okay, that's the life cycle core. Business Central helps you to actually do that. Okay, and then if I 
actually go once again with the items. This is then gonna help me to do the following. Let me just tell you where we work with the definition from the item. And then what do we do with that? Um, I'm gonna show you now the purchase replenishment journal, okay? This is where the purchase order will be created based on what, okay? Let's just take a look at some of the results. This is a very, you know, in a nutshell, the functionality. So you get the idea and then, well, of course we can then special demos. But yeah, this is telling me what to purchase. I want jeans Linda Lane. We have a function that is going to add the items to journal. This is already completed. I have items here, but the idea is, more or less, it's a little bit slow. I don't want to rerun again. But this told me that among the different items that we might replenish, only a few of them require, like jeans Linda Lane, require need 200 pieces. Why? Why do you need that, okay? We can just check it immediately. And this is telling me that only the current store free Salora Cosmetics is actually send, selling this item. This is telling me actually where I have sold the item 200, okay? Quite interesting to see this because this can tell me even more information, right? Whenever it's needed. Okay, let's take a look at another item. Okay, for another item, which is a bag. Okay, I have been selling this item on my fashion store and on the cosmetic store. Okay, in two stores, I have been selling this item. And I need 94 items per store. So this is the first lecture. And behind the scene, just to mention, we have different calculation methods that the system, as I told you with the life cycle curve, is going to help me to configure. You can see that I will be beginning with, okay, why is this uh, telling me that I need 200? Hey, you are replenishing this item still manually, but guess what? Okay, manually means that, well, we have inventory levels, okay? Let's just take a look at this very fast, at least one or two of the calculation methods. When we begin, to actually um, basically a replenishing for the first time. Okay, we don't know how the system works. Okay, so we, as, as I mentioned before, uh, we need to sort of speak uh, help to help you actually with 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 the system actually to start replenishing with just a few items. So, or, or let's begin. Neither with, with my own experience, but let's say that you are going to introduce new items, right? So when we actually do that, we need to purchase and establish some uh, some of the few items, right? Uh, that we want to replenish. And the, the idea here is that, well, we are going to actually define for our items that we introduce for the first time. Well, at least I want five or 10 units at most, right? In every store of this or that item, show them, put it in a special place. These are my gene balance that the replenishing process is telling me to, to actually purchase again. Why is happening that? Once again, I need to come from my own retail item card to define that. And that will be then com communicating with every every part of the actually, a, a, well, different part of the system and, and, and sending items to the store. So this is Jim Lane. This has a manual estimation. So I started, hey, I plan to sell this item maybe in the following 10 days. I'm going to introduce it for the first time. And I want to establish, well, 10 units per day, but for maybe 18 days, okay? I want to start with one single item and communicate that to the system. Okay, it's very easy. I want to give you this idea. I more or less think that I will be selling this item for 18 days or maybe for 30 days, it's up to you. And normally I sell this type of items, which is normal clothing, it's just blue jeans. I normally sell 10 units on a daily basis, okay? Review that information if you have similar items for the first, first time and give me some data that can help us to start. Very easy then, not, nothing complicated. And this is the stock level functionality. So we have maximum, minimum inventory, a safe inventory. So you never go out of stock. 
But then the system is going to tell you, okay, after a few weeks of manual estimation, I can see that I still need to replenish. So why not then to move to another type like the average usage, okay? Which in the end, look at this, this item, average usage is going to take a look. We don't need to do anything else, okay? Average usage is telling me that the system actually moved to be able to sell these tablets, okay? It's telling me to buy now five pieces, okay? Because I, in average, sell this through the last periods, okay? This will be quite more interesting to see. It has more like statistical info, basically. I want to then understand why, uh, why are you calculation details? The system told me move from manual to automatic. That's what is happening with this item. And it, remember that I have the electronics a, a, a life cycle, okay? So the system is measuring all my electronics and then it's going to give me calculation like this. For a store number a one, okay? I have a, well, different lines of review. I have my reorder point in this store to be five, okay? You told me that I should have at least five. And this will be my benchmark. From here, if I detect a trend, a, 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 I will tell you to actually purchase more, okay? It's up to you. This is how the average is being awakened. When I start selling, and the system alone is going to then tell me exactly that, and I have detected a trend. But in this case, well, you, we could continue to sell and to review where I might warehouse for where sales, um, and other information. So the idea is that, well, in the end, for the store number one, okay, I would have a decision, quantity zero, zero because reorder point is five, less than effective inventory, okay? Hey, don't purchase. I need at least, well, to have five. I have detected, I, I haven't yet detected a trend, but you have 16. So I don't need to purchase for this store anymore, okay? Because yes, I have seen that, yes, the trend of the sales operation has started. So I will be then just the replenishing process automated will replenish only the stores from where you are selling, okay? So some ideas in, in, a, in a general, in a nutshell, I have a life cycle process to understand which when I'm going to stop doing the, the manual work and business central will take care only for those items that actually have a trend, okay? Then I'm going to then purchase exactly according to that and business central will show me in the actual calculations that we detected so I can actually review and be super sure before I actually go and click on create purchase orders, okay? That would be basically the idea. Interesting. But then this is not all. This is not all. For you purchasers that are on the supply chain as well, I sometimes need to create my own budgets, right? Um, and with the money that I will be actually having, of course, that I have cash flow and I need to review all that, right? But I want to first understand the basics, okay? If I have a budget that I can create and we can actually take the historical information from the last year, create a budget for you, to understand more or less how much you can actually purchase, okay? But as well, I would like to compare it against my real uh, sales, okay? Because in the end, okay? Uh, the actual analysis for the budgets, we call it the open to buy view. And then I'm going to analyze, okay, what are the actual sales um, uh, with the actual, in comparison with the, the ones that I have actually projected or from last year, if you want to close uh, uh, a factor. And then do the same for the purchase. And I'm just verifying if I have been doing good in terms of the plan, purchases and the committed, okay? So this is for now incredibly good, okay? is for any given reason, actually in this analysis, uh, we I have created my budget on a monthly basis, January, February, March, but it's up to you. You are going to tell me how you want to create this analysis so you can actually check your purchasing behavior in comparison to the last year and at the same time analyzing with the real purchase and sales for that specific period in this specific year. So I'm doing all the analysis and this will be really good for me to at least 
check well if have I have overspent, and then take a look at those uh, expenditures and if I have been actually selling the items that I have purchased. You have all of these tools together, okay? So this is regarding a little bit about the inventory, the purchase, the replenishing, and in the end for your purchasing team, the budget analysis, okay? So uh, this is then how we connect more or less, right? The, the idea of that centrally in my head office, I will be, will be attending the necessities of my store. Okay. I told you as well that I will be explaining some features about discounts and loyalty, okay, which is as well part of this, okay? I forgot to, to, to explain that in the following webinars, I will be now bringing to these additional solutions, well, the Shopify store, okay? Shopify is, a, a well, maybe one of the largest providers for online sales, okay? So without you really having to do your own website like we do, right? With your own uh, uh, basic uh, design or super complicated uh, online store uh, with the advanced features, design menus, and well, different, different promotions and things that you might be offering. Shopify already has all that, okay? And we connect Business Central with Shopify channel to be able to sell and then, well, internationally even, okay, to send items and then with uh, additional uh, uh, logistics like DHL, FedEx, and to send package to customers to their actually a, a home, home delivery address. Okay, for but that will be the future, uh, maybe uh, in January at most, uh, because well, uh, well, we are in the last part. Maybe uh, for now, I would be con I would be with this retail part still. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is just explain a little bit about the loyalty program. Okay, and we call them clubs. It's then um, a configuration that actually uh, we do whenever we want to apply that. For our customers, we want them to purchase more and we want them to come back to our store always. For that, we create a customer loyalty club. What it does, my Kronos loyalty club actually has, well, different levels from silver, bronze, silver, and gold. This idea is that uh, the more you, you, you're going to start uh, when, when I create a loyalty customer, right? Um, we we create them and we give you, well, different levels. We start from bronze and if you purchase, well, you will be part of the gold. As well, we the idea here is that, well, we are going to have a name of this club because this is not only for uh, this idea of levels, but as well, I have my staff. This is a, a loyalty club for me. So I offer uh, free meals, so, uh, maybe five uh, five meals a week, right? If you're in the supermarket, you have your, your, your employees, okay? So they will be having, yes, benefits, and they will be part of the staff runs loyalty. Okay, loyalty club. Now, the idea is that I just would need the different information. We do it from the POS actually. Now, how do we operate? We are going to ask for the accounts. So we either here in the head office or in the POS, we are going to create our customers by asking the information like to Paul, to Vivian, to Rachel, even myself, I'm here, okay? All the information will be requested in the POS. Your cashier can create Mr. Noe, a employee, all right? And he's going to get a actual contact number. That's it, nothing else, okay? And after this, I could generate, if you want it, active cards, okay? Because with the telephone or with the name, we can identify the customer in every sales operation. I'm going to show you in a moment. But here as well, if you want like other uh, important retail uh, um, brands actually do, they give you a printed card with the logo. So you take it and you are going to be part of my loyalty program, but you need to carry your card, your own card number, like it is here, and we read it in the POS. So once you bring your card and we put that information, in this case, the card number 20,001, 20,002, or 20,003, you're going to get special discounts according to your level. The other important feature that we designed here is a point set. 
okay? The point setup is nothing else but, okay, if we are going to be working with the loyalty program, with the so-called customers that we are going to be creating in the POS, what is the, 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 the trade a unit rate for every point we offer. In my example, I started with $1, okay, it would be one point, okay? Maybe this wouldn't be the best, okay? The best example, but the idea is that you offer for $1 or, or for your local currency, well, I don't know, 100 points, something that looks so big that it's appealing to actually earn points. And I'm gonna show you actually in a moment how it actually works. Okay, but we have defined that well for the item uh, if they purchase well the shipment charge now this is maybe not a good configuration to do as an example uh, let me show the chronos loyalty clock okay the point setup for this clock is as following i will be then just basically uh, generating well for different purchases if you purchase from me fuel you're gonna get well, these points, okay? Basically the unit rate for every $10 that you purchase, you get one point. This is more appealing, right, for me. Uh, I'm gonna give you points as well, but no one-to-one -one like I have in this example. For the other items, every dollar gives you a point or is equivalent to a point as well. And how all this idea work together. Okay, uh, once again, very fast in a nutshell, right? The idea is just to run the POS. Let me just actually open it once again so you can see it. And this as well works for your Magento or online stores, as I was just basically explaining. So let me just uh, as well open the Magento, not a problem. Okay, the loyalty, the loyalty works in our different channels. This is my website. Okay. For the same company, remember, right? I'm not actually showing different tools or different programs. The, the traditional POS, um, which I'm going to open just right now, is as well part of my actual system. It's the same one. It's, there's no uh, differentiation, okay? Okay, so I have loyalty uh, with some users uh, that have already registered, and you saw that I can actually configure the points, right? How then is actually the use? The first thing is that, well, I'm going to have, when I open my POS and as well my online store, well, my customers can get specific, special benefits and then accumulate points. The only thing you would need to do is just basically a, a select a name, uh, I don't know. Uh, actually, Stefan, okay. I just need to ask, hey, what's your name? What's your telephone number? Or give me your card, okay? The, the printed one that we actually delivered before, select them. Uh, we have all these mandatory fields that when we work with you, we ask you what would be interesting for you to work with loyalty, which mandatory fields you would desire. Of course, the name, um, the email, all right, uh, the telephone number, I don't know, right? So super uh, 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 important information for us. But, well, I don't know, if you want, maybe you, you can get more because remember that, well, we can, um, and, and I'm telling you now, we could offer discounts for the people that all actually live in London, okay? That's our discounting features are super advanced and dynamic. That's the birthday, uh, the anniversary, uh, and so forth, okay? That's why we then could include any given field as you wish to then get the member contact information. Nothing else. I'm just going to then, after this simple explanation, right? Then what I want to explain, okay, I have added Stefan Thompson to my sales. And I just need to then uh, sell the actual item. Uh, and then, well, I will be selling uh, some, the same uh, 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 jeans I was explaining. Oh, this is telling me that I have a special offer, not only because you are part of the loyalty program. Okay, Mr. Stefan is part of that. Look at this, you can get a towel or scarlet the professional wear, okay? And you're gonna get a special price and you can have communication through this info code or pop-up window that I have actually configured to tell me which linked items will be important to sell with this item and only for this actually a promo, only for this promotion. So 
This is a mix and match. Whenever you purchase jeans, you can actually purchase Curlinda or Towel and you're going to get special price and additional benefits. You remember that I told you about the definition of the variance. Okay, this is super normal for us. This is the same item, but this could be in different colors and in different sizes. Here is when we actually work with all of this information. Okay, remember that I will be replenishing the items as well, important to mention. Well, with these specific characteristics of sizes and different colors. So I'm doing a lot in this very moment, right? I have included Mr. Stefan. He's now part of my loyalty program. But then later, what I'm going to do is just add a 20% of discount for this special promotion. Nothing else. The idea now is that I'm just going to finish this sales operation. Okay. And well, as I was mentioning, we have different methods, the cash, the card, customer, quick cash. And look at this, member points. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay. I don't know how many, uh, but I don't have the cash. I only brought my customer uh, in my loyalty card. Can you tell me how many points I have in this card? Or you can tell me just with my name, Mr. Stefan Thompson is in the house, right? I want to give a special treatment to Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson, you have a point balance of 188. Don't worry, you can cover the sales operation 136. Okay, and we can even show right this on a second display for he to see this total amount. Okay, with hardware, we install all the peripherals if you want, just to finish this part of the presentation, I can share my actual uh, PowerPoint just to show you, well, other type of features that we can integrate. Let me just show you some of them. Here will be my, yes. Why not to connect a terminal device to read the cards as an example, right? Or all the peripherals, okay? So you want to do a regular POS, an Android, a tablet device with the scanners, with terminals, with double display, however you want to do it. I'm gonna show you in a moment my double display. But I was just speaking about the hardware because sometimes this double display needs to be shown to your customer. Like am I doing in my virtual demo, but this is a screen that should, the customer is seeing. Well, let me just close that screen. And then, well, I was just explaining, right? I, I have enough balance uh, with the special treatment that I give to Stefan. He can pay now with this 188 points available. So it's not like gonna be a problem. So uh, he can just do the actual total or even do half with member points, half with cash have with uh, whatever currency methods as well. We can pay with Euro, USD and others, okay? So I will be paying just with the so-called member points. These are 188 points that I could actually use, okay? So I will pay, pay with that, okay? These points were accumulated before actually. And then look at this, 188 points are just $80. Look at this conversion, okay? This is the tricky part that the customer will, a, 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 in this loyalty program, actually has to do with the conversion of points. 188 points are equivalent only to $80. Oh, that's bad. So, well, no problem. And you can still select another payment method to cover the additional payment required for 170. Okay, so you are seeing a lot of different aspects of the functionality, automated discounts, loyalty points, and well, basically all the features that are that were sent right to this POS. The same would be happening if you want to sell this loyalty program to your online stores, okay? So once again, we have all of these different channels, right? And actually uh, to, to sell them. And look at this, discounts on accessories collection up to 25% of discount, okay? Other type of features from our website, okay? So all this category immediately gets a 25% discount. And this was sent to your actual web store, 
okay? Immediately, you can see all the items included in this actual promotion, okay? And you can take a look at, well, even with more detail, these are bags, okay, that are included in this promotion. And let me just take a look at other categories for maybe Linda rests, okay? Uh, from here as well, uh, the idea is that uh, you're gonna be able to actually see the features or, or uh, promotions that are enabled as well for your loyalty or for general uh, aspects, okay? For general promotions that you want to offer, okay? Just to mention behind the scene, we are going to be able to send emails, uh, have a uh, communications with Facebook to actually publish the same information. Because one thing is that the system calculates everything according to what we have configured, right, automatically. But the other aspect is the promotional part, okay? So this is just my website that I wanted to show that in the end, you are gonna need to then use email, Facebook and other ideas to make your promotions for the stores. And everything is just actually just configured here. So you are going to be operating from LS Central. Okay. Now, coming back as well to the actual promotions, I'm going to show you just, uh, just to finalize some of them. This is the so called Niction Lads offer list. These are the ones that I love the most because I, I'm really getting super creative. Let me show, just show you some examples. If you purchase a combo, you get 20%, right? Similar to, 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 to the ones that I have discussed, it, okay? If you buy a five, you get two free, but what, what type of item, okay? If mix three items from different groups, a boy three, buy three, and you get the cheapest one for free, okay? What else? A magazine and coffee special. A burger and diary. If you purchase this two, right? A t-shirt. T-shirt, buy three and get one for free. Okay, take this idea. How all of this just work? Okay, let me just pick randomly any one of them. You, in this retail store or in this retail environment, you are going to decide, okay, sometimes you need to mix and match items to be sold, okay? To be sold together. Let me just show you one of them uh, that has plenty of items to see. Okay, I have here, hey, I, I know that I sell magazines. I know that I sell coffee. I know that I, I sell flavored coffee as well, okay? But if you purchase the items that I want you to purchase, it doesn't only give you an automated 10 or 20% discount. They need to be part of different groups. The magazine is A and the coffee is B, okay, different groups. So, well, according to that, well, I'm going to give you a free magazine, okay? Standard price will be zero for this promotion. But if you purchase this and that and the other, how many units, maybe, okay, only if you purchase three of them, I'm going to give you one of this kind of this other item. The idea is that you are going to be able to combine a lot of stuff Okay, and even tell, okay, uh, but this is going to trigger a, a currency, only if you pay with a currency. As well, the member, if you are part of the bronze of silver, remember that I told you that my actual loyalty uh, customers get special discounts. This is because of what, okay? Because you can tie different discounts to your different levels of loyalty. And even for different la layers, of, of different clubs or just for regular uh, customers, you can offer a special price, different type of discounts by percentage, our discounts amounts, right? Different type of features, but believe we have so many pa power, so much power behind this engine that so far, literally, I only, among 10 different years, only one customer told me to do one promotion that I couldn't do. And I need to customize here and there just a little because this is so powerful. And we know, right, that your ideas when it comes to a to, to discounts and offers will be so so big. Okay, multi buying. The more you buy, you get more discount. Okay, super easy. Uh, this is not complicated at all. Like uh, creating with a lot of imagination. I mean, a discount with. Uh, being really creative about the process. This is just direct. 
If you purchase a five, you get a five discount. If you purchase 10 and if you purchase 15, you get a 15% discount. You got the idea which items? Well, include them, include them. All of these items, my documents, boy jeans, they are completely different. But well, since I know that I sell a lot of volume for these type of items, well, why not to offer them this type of discount? You get me? For paper, of course, and I will be selling it with this idea. Okay, so this is basically some some of the few aspects that I could offer you. Purchase a more uh, mix and match, and of course we have the basics like this item of this group of items get ten percent of discount. Okay, now the last thing or one of the last things that a lot of our customers ask me a lot: Hey, I want to know a be able to do a promotion right in Facebook. Um, and then I want to publish something and publish with a, a barcode, okay, a barcode that if you tell me, uh, if you print and if you bring the, uh, this promotion with you, I will give you a discount. Everything will be working then with the idea of a coupon. Okay. That is exactly, you can offer the coupon, print it, and give it to your customers, and they can just simply come back. We can read the barcodes, and I have, a, for instance, a coupon that gives me, if I buy 10 Guinness, get one for free, and I can print it and publish it or, or, or upload this coupon number, okay? I just need to design the store coupon. What is it for? Which items, okay? This will be for the item Guinness beer, okay? The store coupon. Then what we do here is just generate a report to bring these coupons or you offer them electronically in the POS, okay? So whenever you actually have a coupon, a store coupon, this, whenever you purchase, okay? These 10 beers, you get a coupon that we print for you in front of you with our printers, or you can send it to Facebook or send it to a magazine to print that barcode with the specific beautiful text, uh, my best bay, a 10 Guinness promotion or whatever, right? And get these discounts, okay? Immediately we just print and the system give you well, basically, we have the coupon references. We create with the different uh, characteristics of what you configure the, here, a specific coupon then to get the discount and give away to the customers these same coupons so they just come back, okay? Uh, as well, uh, the idea here is uh, controlling this discount centrally, okay? And just to mention, we transfer all this information that we do so the POSs behave the way we want it. And as well, when it comes to inventory, when I was speaking about replenishing, and well, the most important things in every retail industry are man inventory control and be able to then get more customers to the store. Okay, that's why we I'm, I'm focusing on these parts. Okay, and then everything is all centrally management and centrally done. Everything is centrally managed right? You are going to be able to change uh, prices, do promotions, or then purchase your items and then uh, uh, deliver to the actual stores when whenever needed, right? So this is basically, a, in a nutshell, please let me know. I can share my a, a informative a, this is a, 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 for informative purpose. If you want to understand a little bit about retail, well, what is the actual idea about, right? This is not sales, okay? I, I'm not even a salesperson. For me, I want you to understand we implement this functionality. We want to actually, we have it working, right? In the end, please take a look. If you want, a, to give me your email here and then I will be then put your email here in the in the chat so I can then share the same information. Look at this, all that you're going to get, financial budgeting, inventory management, sales and marketing, reporting. Well, everything that I have more or less explained in a super fast manner is, well, basically this circle, okay? Starting from, well, finance, I didn't explain. Uh, I, I have explained this is business central, this part, a, a very standard module. But I want to then go and understand this basic circle to do 
to then understand what is the retail experience about in the end, once you understand some of these basic concepts, okay? So this is it. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please let me know. I can show, I don't know, maybe you, you were expecting uh, something more specific about this, all right? A, a not, uh, a, or, or you have a pain point for, for your own a, a store management. So maybe we can actually talk about solution within the actual webinar or just contact me in my email. Let me just write in the chat. So you actually can just simply contact me and share your thoughts. Uh, through my webinars, I actually always get uh, some of the uh, uh, requirements from our prospects and customers. So they want to see functionality, all right? So this is not only a, a webinar for, well, just see what we have. This is just basically with, with our customer requirements, how I just prepare this type of information, right? So uh, here you have my email. If you need, just please, you know, send me an email to, to get additional information or a specific demo to your industry, right? Because, well, a, a, this will be different for supermarkets, for the fashion industry, for jewelry, or other type of retail industry. A, a, we have a, 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 a in this to, to, to be applicable to, to, to use <coughs> with this system, right? But basically, it's the idea that we sell on retail manner, okay? Your stores your websites a uh, Shopify is coming as well. If you want to create a, a if you want to take your store and, and take it to the outlet, okay, with a tablet only and send the merchandise and sell somebody to start selling in the outlet, we can as well have it. Okay. But no problem. So this is then the the is the final a review of what is the LS Central solution. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, hopefully we can see each other next, next webinar. Okay, thank you very much and have a super great week.